Hi everyone. <laughs> Sorry, didn't realize that I was online already. Okay, Assalamualaikum and good afternoon everybody. Thank you so much for being with us again. We are currently on Doctors Go Live. Uh, regulars would know that we are here almost every week because we would like to share some information with you. For example, today's information on health, of course, is very, very important because it's regarding COVID-19 and it's regarding home quarantine okay so before we proceed we would like to share with you a video and it features somebody very special these days okay let's take a look at the video tak tak apa-apa tentang home isolation selepas dijangkiti covid-19 ah uh, dari pengalaman saya saya tak pernah positif lah tapi daripada kenalan-kenalan saya yang positif biasanya apabila kita didapati positif biasanya pihak KKM makan call kita lah Uh, and then dia akan assess kita punya tahap kesihatan Kalau yang teruk biasanya dia akan bawa kepada hospital Yang berdekatan Kalau yang tak berapa teruk keadaan tu Biasanya dia suruh kontin kat rumah lah Selama 10 hari yang tiada benarkan keluar daripada rumah lah Itu yang saya tahu lah uh, Yang saya tahu uh, Macam kalau kita Kita dah memang uh, positif diagnose uh, COVID-19 Kena asingkan diri daripada orang lain In case kalau setelah satu rumah tu Duduk dalam bilik asingkan diri Nanti tertempoh yang diberikan lah Rumah isolation uh, ada kena duduk rumah jangan keluar mana-mana uh, if can uh, just isolate in the room lah jangan pergi campur makan dengan family semua takut dia orang pun akan dijangkiti ok jangan kalau ada budak kecil dalam rumah tu jangan pergi angkat main-main dengan dia orang if can just sit in the room with your sanitizer and everything uh, family you kena jangan uh, terlalu uh, ada interaction with your family lah jadi when you have any symptom like cough, flu um, fever then started from that you can be your hospital and hi Are you on home quarantine? Were you told to be on quarantine? Are you puzzled on what to do? Join me, Dr. Mala, at Facebook Columbia Asia Hospital Curah on 18 August 2021, 3pm for us to tell you what you should do, what you should not do, what you should look forward when you're on home quarantine or you're caring for someone who's on home quarantine. So there you go. What a very interesting video that was. Hi, Dr. Mala. How are you? Good to see Hi, you again. Well, I'm fine. Hi, everyone. Uh, viewers on live today. Apa khabar semua? I think everyone is okay. Alhamdulillah. Well, uh, I understand that today punya uh, topic regarding COVID-19 was chosen by you and I'm sure you've got a very good reason for that, kan? Because sekarang ni, yelah numbers pun going up and then we've got people who are positive tapi tak terlampau teruk, dia orang tak payah pergi hospital tapi dia orang duduk kat rumah. But just because you are at home doesn't mean you boleh relax semua kan. Ada a few do's and don'ts lah. So uh, with that in mind, we are going to be talking to uh, Dr. Mala Santi Santari Sekapan, sorry ya, yeah, uh, on from Columbia Asia Hospital Cheras. She is the resident medical officer there. Okay, so I'm sure some of you are already so familiar with her because she is very popular out there sekarang dengan dia punya uh, celote Dr. Mala. Okay, so you guys can can uh, catch that online. Okay, so uh, before we start, just a little bit of interview lah pada uh, yang tak familiar dengan Dr. Mala. Of course, the standard question like I was talking to you tadi, mesti orang semua nak tahu macam mana Dr. Mala ni pandai sangat cakap Melayu belajar dari mana? <laughs> okay, uh, thanks for the question. Macam saya bagi tahu Puan tadi kan, memang I get this question everywhere hmm, tapi betul kalau betul. you all tak percaya, uh, bila dah habis lockdown nanti you all semua boleh travel, boleh berkunjung ke pantai timur di Malaysia sama di Kelantan, Terengganu ataupun Pahang kami di Pantai Timur memang semua fasil bahasa Melayu. So if you tengok, bukan saya je tau. Adik nah. beradik saya, my dua kakak and my adik memang semua fasil Melayu and my kawan-kawan yang dekat sekolah kebangsaan dulu pun memang semua agak fasil Melayu. Mungkin yeah. for me my uh, saya kelajuan oh. saya bercakap tu lebih nah. sikit lah daripada orang lain kan. But yeah, yeah. jadi kita orang fasil dan biasanya kan kuat kalau orang yang utara pun Kedah, Perak, Penang Uh, non Melis hmm. kat Sonja pun sangat fasih tau. Yeah. Dia punya lorat tu bukan actually. Betul juga. Ah, uh, uh, Sekali dengan lorat. Tapi doktor from Kuantan originally. Kuantan Pahang. Ya yeah, Kuantan Pahang. Betul. Hmm, I see. Masya Allah. And then kisah pasal nak jadi doktor ni memang daripada kecil-kecil lagi ke? Cita-cita? So cita sikit. Dia ah, punya doktor. Setiap Indian family kan dia akan ada satu anak yang mak tu duk pujuk-pujuk dari kecil suruh jadi doktor. So I Dah dengar ni. Ada <laughs> pun anak in my family lah yang my mother pujuk-pujuk suruh jadi doktor dari dari kecil. The thing is sebab mak saya, adik dia doktor. So my maternal uncle is also a doctor. He's like 
30, 30 plus years uh, a doctor is my greatest mm. inspiration uh, actually. So uh, because yeah. Mak punya adik is a doctor then she wanted at least mm. seorang daripada anak dia jadi doctor. So it started from mm. like kakak like tak jadi then saya tak jadi. So I'm the third one like you know like. Mm. But then because Mak dah letak that thought daripada kecil mm. it wasn't mm. like Mak paksa sebenarnya. Saya sendiri yeah. yang Uh, after form 5, after form 6, bila ditawarkan buat account and finance, I couldn't take it. Yeah. Saya sendiri uh, tak boleh bayangkan myself not being a doctor. So I had I had yeah. to first two weeks because good, it good. was my yeah. ambition. Right. And how long have you been with uh, Columbia Asia Hospital, Shiraz? Uh, Columbia Asia since January 2020. So I'm here like one year, eight months. I see, I see. So what's the best thing so far about being a doctor? You punya favorite best, moment lah, something yang tak boleh lupa. Best thing so far, um, of course, is uh, being with them at the toughest time they can be. A human being, toughest time is actually when they have a health crisis. Biasanya yeah. the world and everybody think financial crisis is the worst or relationship crisis, you know, breaking yeah. up, family fights, that's the worst. But as a doctor, I feel when they are in health crisis, Uh, that is the worst because they cannot help themselves. They, they right. need nurses, they need doctors, they need ambulance drivers, operators. Everybody <coughs> have to work like <coughs> it's their family being yeah. sick. <coughs> so the best moment is actually working in a highly dynamic team right. for right. one patient, caring for the family members and the patient at the same time. Especially when we bring back the patient, when we, you know, you you yeah. sign for cat lab and it yeah. comes back, you do CPR, the pulse comes back. That's like yeah. uh, the most blessed moment. Uh, That's very that good. I have. Inshallah, what what a noble venture this has been yeah, for you, Doc. Uh, you yeah. are based at the emergency department, kan? The Columbia Asia Hospital, Cheras. Correct. Okay. Okay. All right. So we're talking to somebody who's very uh, experienced. Okay. So you guys, if you want to send some love to Dr. Mala, don't forget to send all these emoticons of heart shapes, yang macam ni, ataupun yang smiley face, macam tu. Doctor punya smile pun berseri-seri. So she's ready to talk to us about home quarantine. Okay. Silakan, Doctor. Okay. Oh, home sorry. Home. Now the soalan. If you've got any questions, you can just type dekat the comment section after doctor punya uh, presentation ni and then we will address all the questions, okay? Okay, sorry doctor, silakan. Sure. So, kita nak bercakap tentang home quarantine, kita nak cakap tentang quarantine kediri jadi kepada semua yang tengah tonton live ni, saya minta anda letakkan hashtag home quarantine, hashtag quarantine kediri supaya siapa-siapa yang cari informasi berkenaan dengan topik ni dia boleh sampai kepada video ini. Dan jadi sambil-sambil kita timba ilmu, kita tolong orang lain uh, di sekeliling kita. Alright, first and foremost apabila anda uh, buat home surveillance sebab apa? Sebab ada orang telefon dan bagi tahu, babe aku close contact, hari tu kita jumpa kan? Uh, I'm sorry babe, aku positif, hari tu kita jumpa kan? So hang close contact. So you know You're getting a phone call because you're close contact tapi you belum positive. That's number one. Number two is you dapat call yang you positive sama ada you pergi ambil swab test or something like that. Now first and foremost bila anda terima phone call tersebut jangan lupa untuk confirmkan, double confirmkan identiti. Okay, apa identiti tersebut? Especially bila dapat phone call daripada hospital. Kadang-kadang Dr. Mala pun telefon tau. Saya ada pada Columbia Asia Seceras. Malam ada buat swab test kan. Ah, dia makan ke puan, saya juga kadang lambat-lambat kan sebab saya nak universe tau. Dia makan ke, anak-anak okey ke, nak bagi tahu ni result. So, you know, when we tell, number satu, number one, confirmkan balik nama penuh anda berserta dengan Ben, Betty, betul ataupun tidak. Identity is very important. Dan nombor dua, nama berserta dengan nombor IC. Confirmkan betul ataupun tidak. Dan tanya sekali lagi, betul ke positif doktor, betul ke itu doktor, ini doktor, confirmkan dan pastikan result itu kepunyaan anda. Bila kawan telefon pun nak bagi tahu yang kamu close contact, confirmkan kembali kita jumpa dekat mana kau positif bila uh, kau last uh, you, kau dapat daripada mana and everything sebab all the details will be needed. Bila anda close contact, anda nak tahu kawan anda yang positif tu bermula gejala bila, kawan anda yang positif tu test covid dia bila, kawan anda yang positif tu kategori ke berapa kawan anda yang positif tu dapat jangkitan daripada mana. Ini adalah soalan-soalan yang akan ditanya kepada anda yang merupakan close contact kepada kawan sebab kita nak tahu you belong to the same cluster or not. 
These are very important information that you want to know. Once you miss that phone call, you nak call balik is very difficult. Doctors are very busy. They call 30, 50 patients per day. So susah. Kawan pun sama juga. Dia dah nervous breakdown. Dia ada 20, 30 close contact. Kita pula nak call call. So make sure you settle all that in that one phone call. Kalau boleh, kalau rasa nervous macam kita orang perempuan kadang-kadang memang kita cepat nervous breakdown. You might want to write it down so that you know you remember. Nowadays, most of your swab test results are reflected in your My Sejahtera. Dia keluar notification dekat My Sejahtera, your swap test result. They are synchronized. So they, that makes things much, much more easier. Okay? Now, uh, throughout kita punya conversation ni, I'll be talking about two different conditions. Satu, bila anda quarantine, bila anda close contact, which means can point, they are not yet positive. They are mm -hmm. still negative but they still have to go to a quarantine. And second situation mm -hmm. is that anda positive tetapi anda um uh and uh, mild symptoms so you mm. are still uh, go to quarantine at home uh now apa perlu buat lepas letak telefon itu okay, i know everybody akan nak quarantine dekat mana bilik mana pergi mana and all that mm. nasihat doktor mala tips daripada saya lepas letak telefon daripada panggilan itu rehat kejap calm your mind kalau boleh tengok dengar satu lagu ataupun tengok satu short sitcom clipping Think about 5 to 10 minutes for yourself. You need time. Okay sabar. That 5 to 10 minutes is not going to make any difference uh, with your COVID outcome in the end. Okay so calm down. Calm down 5 minit, 10 minit. Uh, for those yang ada religious belief, you might want to say some prayers, you might want to calm down. Ada yang, you know, you want to take wudu first and everything that's completely okay. But take 5 to 10 minutes to calm down and organize your thoughts. Throughout the quarantine, one most important thing is caring for your mental health. Please remember, if we are not just talking about your physical health, bukan hanya tentang pernafasan sakit kepala demam, I also pay very important attention kepada your panicky. So calm down. Yeah. Right, that's one thing. Uh, lepas betul, you dah organize your, sorry? Tak betul, betul. I'm agreeing with you. Because lalu orang lupa uh, kan masa mental health. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. We always remind them to panic. Do this, do that. Get toiletries, mm -hmm. do utilities. Mm -hmm. We always remind them to panic. Actually, the first thing yeah. you should do is calm down. You are positive, yeah. you are at yeah. home and you are receiving calls. That means you are in the better end of the spectrum. You are mm -hmm. not in the worse end. So calm down, right. calm yes. down, mm -hmm. right? Care for yourself. Now, the next thing sebenarnya you want to do is anda nak mencari satu fasiliti untuk anda quarantine sama ada di rumah, nak pergi pusat quarantine rendah ataupun nak cari hotel dan sebagainya. Before doing that, there are two things you want to do. Yang pertama, you nak cari support system. You don't want, if I were to be a close contact ataupun kalau saya COVID positive, I don't want to tell everybody around the world. I might not even put it up on my Facebook. I have too many people on my Facebook. I don't want them to know. So, mm -hmm. saya akan cari support system. Siapa support system mm -hmm. anda? Keluarga, adik-beradik, jiran, ahli keluarga, uh, apa ni, rakan sekerja yang duduk berdekatan dan sebagainya. Why do you need support system? Okay. Bila anda tiba-tiba perlu pergi ke hospital then you need the support system to at least have to make phone calls and etc. Okay. You need the support system uh, to be there bila anda mental breakdown. You need the support system untuk tolong jagakan anak, untuk hantarkan groceries, okay. untuk hantarkan fruits and etc. Kalau habis ubat nak suruh tolong hantarkan dan sebagainya. So remember people out there, you need support system. So cari yeah. these three, four people, one, two WhatsApp groups yang you nak bagi tahu, Babes, you know, I just received call, I'm positive today. Uh, please be with me this 10 to 14 days. So you want to lantik your support system. You want to elect yeah. them and tell them you are my support system. Kena cakap. Aku yeah. bagi tahu dua WhatsApp group saja. adik-beradik aku yeah. dengan korang my friends. I'll keep updating here. If I don't update you guys uh, one time per day, please look for me. Bagi tahu. It's very, very important. Uh, that's number one you want to do, which is uh, lantik you punya support system. And number two, what you want to do is you want to tell your potential close contacts. Kalau anda masih negative, you want to tell other people that they, we met, that they, you know, we worked together. I know we were both wearing masks, but I'm on quarantine. I might turn positive. Take care, be safe. Bagi tahu dia. And if you are positive, you must tell all your other close contacts juga. 
uh, whoever lah, uh, you know, yang uh, I always say, imagine if you're positive tomorrow, your only close contact must be only orang yang duduk serumah dengan anda. Everyone else you meet should be not, should not be your high risk close contact. If they can be a low risk close contact, that means you work together in a room but dua-dua pakai mask, that's okay. But don't be high risk close contact, alright? So that's two things you want to do. Elect your support system, inform your close contact. Um, honesty is very important. Lagi anda segan, lagi anda tak nak bagi tahu, lagi lama kita duduk dalam pandemik ni, lagi kita tak boleh beraya. So you must tell. Uh, now, lepas settle all that, uh, no more panicky, no more stress. Uh, you have done everything, you have got a good support system. The next thing is you want to go into your home quarantine into that uh, gua ataupun separation for that time mm-hmm. to for the yeah. uh, Saya selitkan sedikit, kalau anda tiada gejala, quarantine biasanya 10 hari dari bermula daripada hari swab test positif. Kalau negatif, uh, kalau close contact, uh, mm. 10 hari bermula daripada hari terakhir anda berjumpa dengan orang yang covid positif itu. Alright, jadi kalau orang yang covid positif itu orang yang duduk serumah, Maka today is your first day lah. Kalau okay. orang yang COVID positif tu adalah rakan pekerja yang anda jumpa contohnya pada hari Isnin hari tu. So hari mm. Rabu ni baru tahu tapi Rabu ni dah jadi hari ketiga lah. Dia macam tu kena kira eh. Mm-hmm. Uh, kalau uh, Sorry kejap eh. Uh, kadang-kadang ada yang overlapping kan dia macam berlapik sebab dalam satu rumah tu ada orang dia uh, dia belum positif dan ada orang yang positif. So dia kena that person kena kira okay, daripada day one to day ten lah. Lepas tu baru dia dah nak habis ni suddenly somebody else in the house pula find out yang dia positif. So dia kena start balik ke atau dia every time dia nak kena reverse ke? Start back from scratch? Uh, kalau dia dengan orang yang positif di dalam rumah okay kalau yang tiba-tiba positif tu adalah si anak and then the mother oh, definitely dah jaga kan? Imagine it's a baby yeah. then the mother kena restart balik daripada tarikh anak positif. Kalau okay. yang duduk satu rumah but they were separated anyway. Ada orang yeah. yang dia dia dah seorang macam contohnya the father dah positif. And yeah. then the kakak, abang, mak memang tak tak contact. Dia memang take care of all the home quarantine SOPs dan sebagainya. Right. Then you don't have to reverse. Then it's okay. You just complete. Oh, Most likely tak payah. But then okay. guys, uh, just a little bit of inverted comma. Sometimes dia orang pun nervous takut. So they mm. tend to swap juga actually, they tend to stay indoors juga actually which is not bad, it's okay. Yalah, better be safe kan? Okay doctor, alright silakan. Okay, so uh, the next thing is kita nak masuk untuk pergi ke quarantine. Uh, you have to cari satu bilik untuk you quarantine diri anda. Uh, get the most suitable bilik dalam rumah itu kalau boleh yang ada tandas asing. Kalau boleh, yang paling penting selalu, selalu cakap kalau boleh yang ada tingkap which you can open the, the the window a little bit for ventilation, for exposure to sunlight. Uh, of course, priority yang ada tandas, if possible, ada exposure to sunlight. Uh, kalau anda rasa tak selesa, some people number one, rumah dia memang tak sesuai untuk di kuarantin. Contohnya ibu yang ada ramai anak macam mana nak, nak menyuruh dalam bilik. The children yeah. gonna come and knock and knock and knock, you know. Uh, yeah. And uh, some people like, you know, they feel they are not suitable. Uh, you have two options, you boleh pergi ke pusat kuarantin uh, risiko rendah. Uh, now they have like hotels and centers or you can request to uh, quarantine at Uh, somebody else's place where they can give you a space to quarantine if you have those kind of support system. Some people yes. kan dia ada banglo dengan banyak-banyak bilik kan. Maybe lah dia nak bagi satu bilik kan dan should be okay lah. Uh, yeah. You may want, you if you are category 3 and above, you can get admitted at private hospitals etc. You might want to find out about all those prices and packages. Um, but category 1 and 2 generally you don't need to go to hospital. Uh, hmm. Ada sesetengah golongan walaupun anda kategori 1 ataupun 2 anda perlu pergi ke pusat kuarantin seperti ibu mengandung, kanak-kanak yang terlampau kecil uh, 3 atau lebih comorbid you need to go to the quarantine center. So in between tu yang you kena 2-3 hari sementara tunggu untuk dimobilisasi ke pusat kuarantin tu you kena kuarantin dekat rumah dulu. Alright? So you want to find one room, one place for you to isolate yourself. There's few things yang you nak bawa masuk ke dalam bilik tersebut. Yang pertama barang-barang yang nak guna dalam tandas, all your towel, berus gigi, pencuci yeah. muka etc. Number two, uh, 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 kita punya pinggan, mangkuk, uh, sudu, gelas, 
uh, all your uh, makanan pink botol air very very important ambil lah buah-buahan sedikit chips kacang-kacang or whatever kau duduk seorang kan nanti asyik dapat ya yeah. and then your phone your laptop your charger bantal busu the start and everything you want you might want to get your exercise mat you mm. punya small dumbbell ataupun kalau ada gym ball all those sesuai boleh bawa masuk sebab terus dalam bilik tu because you're going to have 10 to 14 days to live in that room so you know so called you have ample of time uh, i strongly suggest i have been on quarantine few times for being close contact but not uh, not for being positive that should not get uh, at least I uh, enjoy reading storybook. I think that mm. in one time you can go back to the 80s and 90s that you start reading stories mm. because you're alone, you know, so, so, no. Uh, you mm. read uh, novels ataupun any books that you rasa you nak baca, that is a very suitable time actually. So you yes. can also bring storybooks into that, uh, that uh, what do you call that, that quarantine. Uh, I love reading Ahadia Akasha punya stories. Uh, novels, very nice. So kalau viewers kat sini ada siapa-siapa yang uh, novel lovers macam saya, you all can, can write in the comment section what are the novels or authors yang you all juga. I'll scroll through later. Now, a uh, few other things which is important untuk bawa masuk ke dalam quarantine room is your sanitizer, uh, the the dropping type and also the spray type, wet wipes, very very important. Uh, dan yang uh, paling penting dan sangat penting adalah number one, your thermometer your pulse oximeter kalau ada yang kecil tu sekarang your BP machine kalau ada especially kepada golongan 40 tahun dan ke atas uh, dan juga uh, I always suggest sediakan satu basket ataupun satu dustbin asing and you keep it there so all you punya barang-barang you punya uh, access uh, during your quarantine you masukkan dalam that particular dustbin no hurry in throwing them especially mm-hmm. kalau dry items like your daily mask, you buang dulu yeah. and then later on you nak ikat and then sanitize nak buang is easy. So don't forget to keep a dustbin uh, either in front of your room or just you know inside there. Mm-hmm. A small oh, one. Tu sebelum mask tu sanitize dulu eh? Sebelum no. buang mask sanitize? No, no. Mask boleh buang je but the plastic tu kan kita akan ikat. Oh, I see. Ah, uh, so it's good to sanitize sebab yeah, kita tak right. tahu this uh, pekerja right. kebersihan kan you know when they collect kesian dekat dia orang so mm. it is safe to spray and sanitize it a bit sebelum kita buang plastik tu. Yeah. Uh, one more important thing for you to get is ubat-ubatan. I know kadang-kadang your symptoms, you have no symptoms or you have mild symptoms. Mm. Tapi kan you wouldn't know pukul dua belas tengah malam tiba-tiba you demam, pukul empat pagi tiba-tiba you rasa sesama yang teruk sangat. You wouldn't know you know. So it is safe to carry some ubat masuk dalam bilik tersebut mm-hmm. ataupun pergi ke ke tempat yang you know you want to go another place to quarantine that it's safe to bring that. You might yeah. want to get some Panadol, some Paracetamol, uh, right. some ubat batuk, some sort of ubat selesema Uh, mm. some sort of ubat muntah dan juga ubat cirit-birit jika perlu uh, yeah. and any vitamins if you want. I know the question is going to come all day doctor what supplements, mm. what vitamins? Uh-huh. <laughs> Maksud doktor is... cakap je sekarang. <laughs> <laughs> There is no single vitamin proven to improve COVID symptoms or uh, prevent it from progressing to become worse or shorten the duration mm. but any vitamins yang you dah biasa ambil, you probably can take. My advice is, bila anda nak start quarantine tu, don't start a new vitamin. Because you don't know body you boleh accept ke tak that ubat yeah. at that particular time. Makes sense. You, you develop allergy ataupun you know some vitamins pun kan. I cannot take vitamin C, I right? semacam pedih bulu hati. So imagine getting those side effects and complications mm-hmm. when you are on quarantine lagi menyusahkan. Yeah. So much as well don't take. Uh, yeah. Tapi kalau you dah biasa ambil like some vitamin C or zinc oxide or vitamin D, then it's okay. You can take it, no right. problem. Uh, yeah. Tapi make sure you drink a lot of water as well. Uh, two to three liters per day. Uh, <clears throat> now, I personally, now this is no guidelines. Huh? This is no guidelines. I personally, Uh, advice bila anda bermula kuarantin, anda mulakan kuarantin tu that is a, uh, uh, I highly advise untuk uh, consult dulu seorang doktor di awal kuarantin tersebut for you to understand anda berada di kategori berapa 
dan apakah perkara-perkara yang anda nak watch out dan jika berlaku let's say sesak nafas atau something you know who to refer lah like you don't know what's going on you know who to refer so I understand ada problem dengan um, going out seeing a doctor because you're on quarantine nak bawa kereta pun susah you cannot take a grab and etc therefore yeah. yeah. sebenarnya ada program what we call as home surveillance order tele consultation Mm. Okay, this I is by the Asia. Betul. This is, is um, an effort by uh, Columbia Asia Hospital Cheras. I oh. think as you can put it up, okay? Uh, okay. So yeah. So this is what we call as uh, home surveillance uh, order punya tele consultation. Maksudnya kan puan, these are the people yang quarantine dekat rumah kategori 1 dan kategori 2. Alright. Yeah. They, they dia tu kata dia tu tak satu kan the patients are so worried you know dia pun tak tahu you know because covid is so worrying kan uh, and then they they do want a consultation number two sometimes orang yang 40 tahun dan ke atas ada satu sahaja comorbid dan sebagainya it's good for them to get uh, it's good for you to get a consultation daripada seorang doktor dulu uh, so here we have yang mana you can choose the kind of package you want just not one off sekali punya consultation nak dapatkan nasihat doktor one to one this is true tele consultation maksudnya kita akan guna uh, a certain medium a certain online platform untuk doktor bercakap dengan anda assess anda bertanya tengok dan sebagainya and then um, doktor akan tengok dua kali lah pagi sekali petang sekali and then doktor dapat satu conclusion about your category your condition how severe you are dan sebagainya Alright, so this is very important sebab bila anda pergi ke tempat yang macam bila nak admit ke bila pergi COVID assessment center ataupun bila habis quarantine, you at least puas hati sebab you dah consult dah seorang doktor. Alright, yeah. and uh, the good thing about, uh, actually we put a lot of effort to make this package. The good thing about it is that, uh, okay, kalau one off cukup and then doktor kata okay for now cukup, tak apa. Uh, kalau apa-apa nanti kita consult balik. And then, uh, dah cukup. Then you, you just stop dengan starter pack tu. Kalau tiba-tiba perlukan sambungan consultation, then you boleh tambah. Okay, so, uh, nak nak consult another three more days to out your quarantine, nak, nak consult another five more days and etc. So, ia memberi satu ketenangan jiwa. It gives you sorts of a surety and it gives you a sort of a support system tadi. You have a doctor as the support system. So, you know, you fever, you whatever, uh, you you tiba-tiba diarrhea. So, the medications will be delivered to your house uh, without hassle and you know if it's near then uh, my the hospital has promised that it will be free so all those can be helped. The good thing is we are trying to create a support system. You are not alone. Just because anda masuk ke quarantine, you are not alone and sailing in the boat. We are here with you. That's what we are trying to tell you. That's um, Ya, yeah, and then uh, ubat-ubatan pun bukan semua patient perlukan semua jenis ubat. Dan sometimes you dah ada dah ubat. So the doctor can just tambahkan apa ubat yang anda perlu dan sebagainya. Now yeah. I foresee this uh, effort one, uh, this tali consultation yeah. sebagai satu uh, usaha ataupun satu uh, package yang a very important one untuk reduce pesakit kategori satu dan kategori dua menjadi lebih teruk progress worsen dengan tiba-tiba. So yes. hopefully with this we can um, curb more problems. If not all, at least some. That's my hope. So kepada siapa yang uh, who wants to use this, you can uh, press. I think there's link down there. Others scan QR code. You can scan there to understand more. Uh, I don't want to take too much time explaining about this teleconsultation but if you know anyone who needs this then giving them the link it's a big help because they don't even have to have to be nearby Cheras yes. uh, untuk menggunakan facility ini. They can be anywhere in Malaysia as long mm -hmm. as they understand Malay or English I think yes. uh, my position can help and hopefully kita semua sebagai rakyat Malaysia dapat memberi bantuan kepada kawan-kawan kita yang rasa lonely dalam quarantine mereka. Mm -hmm. Alright? <coughs> yeah. So okay. that's about uh, uh, another thing dalam home quarantine which is the ubat uh, right. and the doctors uh, uh, yang you nak uh, gunakan. If you don't take the uh, teleconsultation punya package for any reason, uh, yeah. the next thing you have to do is uh, jika anda, you have to watch up some tips, you have to go to a CAC. I'll come back to that. Before that, okay. saya nak ceritakan dalam 10 hingga 14 hari yang anda berada seorang diri dalam quarantine tu, 
yeah. what do you want to do? Actually ramai mm-hmm. masters kan when they go into quarantine, they actually enjoy that sebab dah lama tak meet time. <laughs> dah lama tak seorang. <laughs> Yeah, so you know, uh, I've had some friends yang dah married like 10, 14 years and then tiba-tiba okay. dapat 10 days quarantine. They felt like it was a holiday, you know, especially yeah. when the children were negative. But th- there's a lot of symptoms. Now let me tell you what are the discipline that you have to keep when you're on quarantine. Yang pertama, jangan bangun pagi pukul 2 petang. Hmm. <laughs> jangan, jangan, tidur malam pukul, jangan tidur malam pukul 4 pagi. Don't do that. Hmm. You have to keep a normal routine. Yeah. Okay. You have to. Okay. Uh, that's okay. Uh, let me continue. There's a question coming up, but it's okay. Uh, you have to continue a normal routine. Tidur mm-hmm. awal, bangun awal. Pukul tujuh lapan pagi tu, you dah bang, you dah nak bangun dah. If, 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 mm-hmm. Kalau bukan lima enam pagi, at least tujuh lapan pagi you nak bangun dah. Yeah. Bangun yeah. and then you clean yourself. You Kepada yang ada religious belief, you want to pray in the morning, you want to have some time to meditate. And yeah. then, like, the morning time is when, if possible, you want to expose yourself to sunlight. So, ramai yang kata, you know, you're not supposed to open the window because it's airborne, nanti pergi kat jiran dan sebagainya. Uh, I think we have to show a little bit of compassionate kepada patient yang quarantine di rumah macam ni. You can always open the window and go a little bit behind, like one meter from the window. You just nak dapatkan the sunlight, you know, and you can even mm. membelangkakan, that's okay. Uh, yeah. Bukanlah lah kita pergi macam-macam tempat, duduk supermarket and what not, kita tak takut mm. whether orang tu positif or negatif, tapi orang yang kuarantin mm. juga kita nak stigmatize. Uh, yeah. So, uh, kepada yang masih dimurahkan rezeki, diberi kesihatan, yang tested negative all this while, despite mm. 1.4 million Malaysians uh, ex-COVID, uh, ex-COVID patient, please yeah. don't stigmatize the patients. Please don't scream at your neighbors because they open their window. Mm. The window opening is both needed untuk dia dapatkan sunlight, untuk dia dapatkan a little bit immunity and untuk dia kekal uh, sane in terms of mental health juga. Nampak, you know, a little bit of greenish, a little bit of uh, cahaya matahari. And you guys, you know, when you're not on quarantine, we, you don't even wake up at 7, 8 o'clock, kan? You all bangun pun 10, 11 pagi, kan? So, let them get some sunlight early in the morning. You know, I think that should be okay. So, kesian dekat mereka, right? So, you you want to open the window, you allow some sunlight to come in, then you, you can go behind a little bit and, you know, let, let your skin expose to it. Yeah. Uh, you want some vitamin D, you want some calcium, blah, 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 all that absorption. Yeah. I tak nak masuk to that physiology, but sunlight yeah. is very, very important. Kalau tak boleh, then it's okay. Uh, mm. Don't stress yourself, should be fine. But if boleh, use that a lot. Uh, then, uh, if you have time in the morning, a little bit of light exercise is very uh, advisable. Janganlah buat jumping jack sampai, uh, you know, you are berpelo-pelo and everything. I think a little bit of stretching, stretch your neck, stretch your back, stretch your hands, that'll be fine. Uh, and then uh, you want to go into your proper meal routine, breakfast, brunch. Brunch you boleh ambil snack like fruits, it's a good snack. And then you take your lunch, you take your uh, afternoon, you take your tea time snack and then you take your, your dinner. Minum air, take a lot of fruits. Uh, you don't have to. Uh, the thing is, ramai orang rasa bila I quarantine, I need to. Uh, I need to boost my immunity immediately. So they tend to makan a lot and lots of fruits. Fruits. Uh, and one. Uh, and then they get a lot of sakit perut and what not lah. Uh, so try not to do that. Overdo it lah. Ah, uh, don't overdo that. You know, but pada pada is is enough. But take fruit. You know, you want to eat a little bit of kacang. You want to be. Uh, that's okay. You want to take salad. Yeah. That's okay. Uh, every day. Yeah. Sorry, okay. Pasal doktor tadi cakap yang buat exercise tu jangan terlebih-lebih. Tapi kalau dia rasa okay enough to do cardio yang dia dah biasa buat dan dia pun nak ada yoga ke zumba ke, is it still okay? It's okay. Kalau dia larat lah. It's okay. Ha, okay. It's okay. As long as your stamina boleh tahan but not too much. Not until zumba yang you berpeluh-peluh you know. Terlebih-lebih because lebih, ha. Ah, you, you need met- metabolic rate itu untuk membina antibody, untuk membina protein dan sebagainya. So you want to reserve the energy for that. Uh, you must understand, you, walaupun you negative, you might turn to be positive. So your body needs that extra energy. So not too much. The okay. exercise is more needed untuk you to fill up your time, hmm. untuk untuk you to ease out a little bit and then untuk you sedar. Sometimes you nak buat, semalam you dah buat exercise tau, you were okay. And then yeah. hari ni you nak buat exercise kan, you dah tak larat dah. You rasa macam 
something not right you rasa stuck you rasa penat it's simple lah sederhana yeah, so yesterday you could do stretching yeah. tapi today bila you buat stretching stretching sikit you dah rasa breathless so hmm. you know I'm, I'm different from yesterday kalau you tak buat apa-apa kan kalau you tidur je anyway you wouldn't know how you're progressing so yeah, that's why that's... activities are important that's why sleeping on time is important that's why eating proper meal five times a day is important because you boleh monitor yesterday I could eat this much today I couldn't something is not right with me my appetite has reduced you know that Yeah. So that is what would you advise writing, writing things down like having a logbook uh, you makan apa pukul berapa tidur pukul berapa uh, semua yeah that kind of you you can write you makan apa pukul berapa that would be very great how much you drink how much you eat that would be very uh, great uh, tapi yeah. lagi uh, that, that uh, i did thought about it thanks to you yeah. actually we are bagi the idea so <laughs> writing what you do how much exercise you do how much you eat how much you drink is also very very helpful so at least we get to monitor you and yeah. uh, as doctors what we always tell you apa yang penting for you to monitor is uh, your blood pressure your temperature your oxygenation level to your pulse oximeter kalau ada very very helpful so kalau you boleh baca that one time in the morning one time in the evening ada dua bacaan sehari pun is very very helpful to monitor you and then you know Uh, you have to submit your health status setiap hari dekat my sejahtera. I see. Okay. So what, yeah. So whatever parameters that you have, you boleh submit to that dekat uh, parameter itu. Uh, okay. And then uh, what do you call that? You uh, have to, uh, you know, you have to uh, lepas submit tu, if at any point of time you rasa you nak doctor's consultation balik, you nak jumpa doctor balik, then you can always, uh, number one, you can go to a COVID assessment center. Uh, yeah. Or you can always take this study consultation yang I cakap tadi tu. You can ask for uh, additional add-ons to the uh, initial consultation untuk dapatkan monitoring how are you progressing and etc. Yeah. So bila nak nak consult balik dengan doktor, these parameters yang uh, you dah uh, tulis tu ya eh, macam yang Puan cakap tadi, uh, the, what do you call that, the makan, minum and then your blood pressure, your temperature and all that will be very helpful um, for the doctor to monitor and advise you actually. Uh, in between here ada persoalan do we need to do a chest x-ray untuk tahu dekat mana you punya kategori. Now hmm. it, it's helpful but it's not routine. Bukan semua orang perlu buat. Hmm, yeah. But bila buat, ia membantu sebenarnya. So again, we go by symptoms. Kalau tak ada sesak nafas, tak ada sakit dada, uh, tak ada uh, 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 drop of stamina very bad, usually we won't do. Uh, again, that is why it's good to take teleconsultation because the doctors can advise you that. If not, uh, kalau anda ada theory rate, anda rasa beberapa warning symptoms that I will list down shortly. If you yeah. experience any of that, you boleh pergi ke COVID assessment center yang berdekatan dengan rumah anda hampir setiap daerah ada at least satu COVID assessment center uh, di Lembah Kelang saya rasa each daerah ada dua hingga tiga COVID assessment center which are open every day Monday to Sunday uh, tapi dia ada operation hour yang berbeza so you have to uh, you have to cari dekat you punya daerah tu okay. di mana pukul berapa. Now apakah warning signs yang anda perlu pantau ketika di dalam kuarantin, yang pertama sekali dan yang paling glamour sekali adalah shortness of breath, sesak nafas. Sesak nafas ni ramai orang rasa rasa sesak yang very very teruk baru dia rasa tak ada sesak nafas. No. Uh, sesak yang biasa pun. Sesak yang you know, you feel not right. You, you feel yeah. something is stuck there. Your breathing is not normal like before. When you talk, that's why I said you need support to stop. When yes. you talk, usually you talk to your friend kan or you talk to your kakak. Every day in the morning you, you call your kakak, you talk to your kakak. And then today when you talk to your kakak, you know that when you talk you're getting tired. Your kakak know that you're completing your sentences shorter than before. Yeah. So itu adalah antara signs yang you are having shortness of breath ataupun sesak nafas. Uh, another sub warning sign adalah demam tinggi yang berpanjangan, persistent high grade fever. Uh, what we uh, put is more than 39 degrees, more than 48 hours. Uh, thermometer berbeza-beza. Ber ada yang guna jenis yang tembak, ada yang guna jenis yang ini. Therefore, the number yang kita guna tu cannot be similar. I cannot tell everybody it must be 39. Then the question comes, what is 38.9, 38.8, etc. 
Now, as long as you rasa badan you bahang, you feel mm. it hot and you know, menggelegak your body, that is high grade fever. Alright, because okay. normal adult, normal human being, kalau temperature kita 37.5, 37.8, sometimes kita tak sedar pun. Mm. Especially mm. kalau kita tak sakit badan, you know, you might be going to work with that yeah. kind of temperature. And you'll be shocked, like, I have temperature, I didn't know, ramai adults yang I jumpa, they are like that, you know, especially mm. parents, um, people who work, they don't realize. Now, uh, high grade fever, more than 39 degree, more than 48 hours, you must go to see a doctor. We worry infection tu dah pergi kepada you punya paru-paru. Yes. Uh, sakit dekat you punya dada, chest pain, ketat mm. dekat you punya dada, uh, uh, chest tightness, uh, mm. you feel pucat, you nampak you punya bibir, you punya kuku pucat. Again, this is where tali consultation helps sebab doktor boleh tengok. This is where your support system helps bila you buat video call and everything, hopefully diorang boleh tengok. The thing yeah. with pucat and biru ni, kalau pakar kan, oksigen 95-94 dia dah boleh nampak dah. Orang ni pucat. Kalau mm. MO uh, 92-91 oksigen baru dia boleh nampak, oh dia ni pucat. Uh, so mm. we have different level of experiences and also yeah. eye detection level. Tapi kalau orang orang awam, Mm. I'm afraid kalau oksigen tu 80-78 baru dia orang nampak pucat. Mm. Uh, so yeah. that is why going to a COVID assessment center or taking a telecon consultation helps because uh, yes. the doctors detect your symptoms better and faster. Mm. Another one kalau you ada pulse oximeter when it drops less than 95 mm. uh, then you should be worried you want to go and see a doctor if that's a warning sign. Mm. That's a lot of school of thoughts about SPO2 machine ni it is not as accurate as SPO2 yang kita, oxygen measurement device yang kita guna dekat hospital. So yang the little device yang you guna dekat rumah tu, it is yeah. not as accurate but it's not as accurate as the one, the huge panel in the hospital. Yeah, but then when it drops, I don't think you should take a chance. Kalau dia drop, you mm -hmm. should go to a nearby clinic or hospital or emergency room just to get yeah. it checked. Kalau you pergi double check and then they say no, your oxygen is anyway 98%, you look, you, you're looking good, that device tak baca dengan betul. Then that's okay, it's better to be safe than sorry. Uh, I think uh, uh, that's where I will put it. Uh, I won't say the device is completely wrong, it's very helpful. But uh, kita kena faham yang it does have a little bit of range of your punya activism you know. Right. Uh, a bit more uh, warning signs yang kita selalu terlepas pandang adalah reduce in appetite. Uh, uh, kurang selera makan adalah warning sign yang sangat penting but tak bolehlah kurang selera makan because you slept 12 hours in that one day and then you know blah blah blah. Yeah. It must be like really you have good food, you have food in front of you but you don't feel like eating that should be a warning sign. Uh, Vomiting diarrhea, a lot of losses. Banyak dah cicaya keluar daripada mm -hmm. badan melalui muka ataupun cerit-berit ataupun kedua-duanya. Kita risau badan anda dehidrasi dan uh, masuk ke other phases of your infection. So that's a warning sign. Please go to the ER room as soon as possible or contact your doctor. And one most important thing is confused. Mm. You're confused. The person is confused. They are, kita panggil altered mental status. Uh, so mm. this one sadly you can monitor it yourself. Somebody else must monitor it to you, uh, for you. So that is why support system is very, very important. So bila saya right. call and then, you know, the person looks very blur and then, mm. you know, cakap dah, you know, bercampur-campur and everything. Mm. So your yeah. support system must know something is not right with you. Now this can happen grammatically. You, yeah. one person can be completely okay in the morning and then later petang jadi confused. So that's yeah. where support system is very, very important. So these are the warning signs yang you want to look for uh, during your uh, quarantine uh, session. Mm -hmm. We take some questions, Juan. I think mm -hmm. the one ada mm -hmm. soalan. Ada, ya. Yeah. I've got, uh, I'm looking at the questions dekat uh, stream ya, ni kita punya platform. So shall we take the questions here first? I think you've yeah. got some questions on your screen as well. Uh, I have some Facebook platform. open here ah, on my okay. laptop. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, let me just go through this one dulu. Yeah, we've got about yeah. um, one question here is from Miss Rafida Ramli. Okay, dia tanya, Hi doktor, jika ibu mengandung positif COVID, ikutkan guidelines perlu ke CAC even tak bergejala. Instead hmm. of queuing at CAC, is it allowable to proceed to be admitted to private hospital? Ooh, that's a difficult question. Now, uh, hmm. if you boleh, if 
uh, private hospital tu boleh accept ada katil, ada kepakaran ya because ibu mengandung covid you need to uh, specialist to take care of you one is the physician and one is the ONG specialist preferably a fetal maternal specialist so if such uh, facility is there can boleh uh, but to my knowledge I really don't know to my knowledge I think pregnant ladies must be in uh, pusat risiko uh, pusat kuantiti risiko rendah mm. and or, or must go to uh, uh, like kalau kat sini sungai buloh and etc when yeah. they develop to category 3 so ibu yeah. mengandung ni we usually act faster uh, yeah so kalau tak nak pergi ke CAC tu puan puan cuba telefon dulu ke hospital private yang puan nak pergi tu uh, dapatkan information through the phone kalau okey baru pergi ke private hospital tersebut Okay. Alright. Another question uh, from Miss Farida Warsito. Doctor, how about ibu pregnant? Boleh share sikit tak persediaan yang bagaimana untuk elakkan jangkitan dan cara kuarantin kendiri? Okay. Ibu mengandung elakkan jangkitan sama je macam uh, other adults tapi cuma uh, kena beria tu kena tambah sikit lah ya. That means you still uh, sanitize tangan, pakai mask, kalau boleh pakai face shield and yeah. then you know elakkan 3C dan sebagainya dan uh, yang paling penting eh dalam pandemik ni ibu mengandung tolonglah buka buku lebih awal uh, jangan tunggu 10 minggu, 12 minggu, 16 minggu macam sebelum ni sebab dah anak kedua, anak ketiga dan sebagainya please 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 uh, buka buku lebih awal uh, berjumpa dengan klinik kesihatan berdekatan dengan anda ataupun kalau private pergi kepada uh, that particular doctor private and start your booking, start your scanning as early as possible because we are in pandemic. Walaupun yeah. anda negatif, anda tak ada close contact whatever it is, eh, kita nak tahu your situation before and when you go to early booking, please please mention you punya vaccination status. If you have not yet been vaccinated, tak dapat tarikh pun lagi, please bagi tahu your doctor so that they can arrange for you. Biasanya the ONG doctor, the nurses there will help you to schedule earlier appointment for vaccination. Vaccination really really helps in terms of protection untuk ibu mengandung especially dan kepada semua orang. And ibu mengandung, uh, biasalah kan bila kita mengandung kan kita ada lebih apa ni power lah I nak tua, I nak makan kat sini, I don't want, I don't want that you boleh mengandung lebih sikit. Boleh manja sikit lah. Hmm. Ah, yeah betul, you boleh manja lebih sikit. So ibu mengandung again uh, gunakan you punya super power as mengandung tu Untuk avoid all kind of contacts and infection, orang nak datang rumah tell them no cannot, you know, orang nak reach the SOP tell them no cannot, you know, my baby is very important for me course, and yeah. that kind of thing. I think uh, I would like to shout out to all majikan di luar sana kalau ada ibu mengandung and their job suitable untuk bekerja dari rumah, please please allow them to work from home especially yeah. during this difficult time. Yeah. Okay. Alright. Next question. Uh, Puan ya. Sorry tadi ada cakap miss-miss pula semua Puan. Okay. Puan Najia Zahari tanya what I what do I have to do for post self-quarantine? Uh, and then ada sub-questions. Do I need to retest PCR again? If yes, why? If I do test positive again, even I have retested on 10 days self-quarantine? This is my advice. What I have to do for post test quarantine, do I need to retest PCR? Tak payah. If yes, mm -hmm. why? If I do test it positive again, even if I test it on 10 days. Okay, and number one, lepas habis quarantine, jangan retest the PCR. Do, don't repeat your test. Okay, oh. you have completed your quarantine, mm -hmm. hanya pada 10 hingga 14 hari yang pertama, mm -hmm. anda mempunyai kebolehan untuk menjangkiti orang lain. After that, you can still test positive but anda tidak mempunyai keupayaan untuk menjangkiti orang lain. So you have been positive. Imagine demam campak, chicken pox. Okay, sebenarnya demam campak, chicken pox dia secacar air but I'm going to use demam campak because it's so common in our budaya. Yeah. So demam campak eh. So Alung dah kena demam campak. So you, Alung dah ada all that crust. Sebenarnya lima hari sebelum Alung keluar dia punya first rash Alung dah expose kepada virus chicken pox mm -hmm. and then pada hari kelima baru dia keluar biji-biji-biji and then right. Alung akan makan masa tiga mm -hmm. hingga tujuh hari untuk ada all that rashes all around the body. Mm -hmm. The last blister yang keluar, blister berair, bisul berair tu adalah hari terakhir yang Alung boleh menjangkiti orang lain. After mm -hmm. that, Alung masih ada all that rashes Okay. Kalau buat PCR chicken pox untuk Alung mungkin masih positif kalau buat antibody test positif mm. tapi mm. Alung dah tak boleh menjangkiti orang lain. 
Hmm. Anu has antibody. After that, kalau Angah baru dapat uh, the virus, it's okay. Hmm. Alum boleh expose balik kepada Angah because Alum dah dapat chicken pox. Angah tak boleh infect Ang Alum balik. Anyway, Alum has been infected. So the yeah. you have been infected. There's no point retesting the PCR. That's number one. And uh, number two, when you have completed the quarantine, that means you cannot infect another person. So there's no point testing the PCR again, uh, another time again. But, but, but. Bila anda keluar daripada quarantine, especially in that 10 days or 14 mm. days, bila anda tak pergi CAC center, tak dapatkan physical examination dengan doctors, mm. uh, you were not examined. I always personally advise, ni tak ada guideline tau buat eh, tak ada guideline okay. daripada KKM or something like that. Right. I always borak dengan physicians here, Dr. Amir, yeah. also Dr. Peter. When they come out from the quarantine, it is highly advisable untuk yep. pergi jumpa seorang doktor. Again, yeah. either a GP or a physician uh, in a private hospital. Why I'm yeah. saying this? Because in government, they don't have that facility yet because they're too busy mm. with the COVID itself. Mm -hmm. So you yeah. might see, untuk you dapatkan a little bit of examination, check, dengar paru-paru, baca you punya BP, Let's test kalau perlu, x-ray kalau perlu, as advised by the doctor so that you know where you are. It is okay. also helpful bila you pergi jumpa this doctor and mm. then you know your questions of perlu tak saya buat PCR balik, uh, mm -hmm. boleh tak saya masuk office, uh, my colleagues are very uh, scared, my mm -hmm. family members yeah. are very scared whether I can come out of the room or not. They are asking me to redo my PCR test. Yes. So mm -hmm. when you go and see a doctor, after your quarantine, you meet that doctor in his office room, you get a one-to-one -one consultation, mm. all these questions akan terurai. So it will mm. be very helpful. Daripada you spend that money to do that PCR, you better yeah. see a doctor and get a, a proper, uh, what do you call that, ketenangan jiwa. You know, you really get an idea of what's going on, yeah. you really understand. And that advice yeah. is for you one-to-one. -one. So I always advise this and uh, it, to, for my followers, at least when I ad, uh, advise this, it's really helpful for them actually. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's very uh, clarifying kan because kita takut ada some people who are receiving, people yang baru lepas quarantine tapi dia orang takut. So, dia orang yang paksa. Dia orang kata, no, 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 you cannot come in. You must go and do your test first. Yes. Tapi bila dah jumpa doktor, then the survivor tu boleh cakap, saya dah jumpa doktor XYZ. Yeah. Okay. Doktor cakap uh. macam ni, ini uh, bukti saya pergi jumpa doktor, ini yeah. ubat yang dia bagi, there's the pill uh, or you know whatever it is, it'll be really helpful actually. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we've got one by Mr. Aston Clarence here. Wow, well, Mr. Aston Clarence ada banyak soalan tapi tak apa kita pilih yang ini. How do you know you are PCR after you heal? Is it, okay I think we addressed this already. The test or antibody test, would this be the same test yang you were referring to? Sama lah, uh, no. tak payah eh. The, okay. earlier, the earlier question asked about PCR, no, you don't have to do oh, an okay. antibody test. Yeah, okay. antibody yeah. doesn't translate into protection or immunity, it's just a test. So you don't have to. Okay, all right. I ambil soalan orang lain dulu ya. Nabaneswari Narish Kumar asking doctor, after tested positive with CAT1 and complete home quarantine, is it necessary for us to do a medical checkup? Oh, sama yeah, je tadi. Okay. <laughs> okay, next. That's the one I answer. I, I wouldn't say okay. medical checkup, I would say a uh, uh, consultation. Yeah, and then okay. as indicated by the doctor. Okay. All right. So we skip that one. Eh? That one answered already. Okay. We take again uh, from Mr. Esther Clarence. Is it common that after once in a while chest pain or chills post COVID? Ah. Who should uh, who should we go to check? Since during cat two and after fifteen days, once in a while we eat digestive system sort of gastric feel, then uncontrolled sleepiness. Okay. Doctor pun boleh baca kat situ kan? I think just for you to digest a bit more yeah. about this question. Yeah, okay. Actually, kita diverting a little bit away from our topic. Our topic is about <laughs> quarantine. <laughs> a little bit. 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 Now, tonight at 9.30pm, I will be going live with Dr. Amir Ramli, consultant physician about long COVID. Ataupun mm. apa yang disebut post-COVID. Post-COVID or long COVID is the term given for long-term complications of COVID-19 infection ataupun komplikasi mm. jangka panjang, jangkitan COVID-19. Even after your quarantine period, people yeah. do still experience shortness of breath, cough, yeah. phlegm, etc. etc. Variety of symptoms. Uh, 
I would love to bring in a specialist to talk about this uh, mm. and a solution where you go, what to do, apa yeah. test test yang kena buat, what are the rule of X-ray, CT scan. We'll talk about it in length tonight. So, Mr. Okay. Aston, I'll see you tonight on, uh, but we won't be on Columbia Asia. We'll be mm. on page noted, Dr. Mala. So, I'll see you tonight. Dr. Am Amir will answer everything. Okay. Do Dr. Amin is also from Columbia Asia Hospital, Cheras? Yes, he's also okay. from Columbia Asia Hospital, Cheras. All right. Okay. Don't forget to check it out. Okay, maybe doctor boleh bagi link lah. I can letak nanti dekat the comment yeah. section. Yeah. yeah, later I'll share with you the link. Yeah, no yeah. problem. All right. Uh, another one, we'll take another one from Mr. Aston Clarence also. Is it necessary to get vaccinated and how long after you heal from COVID? What are the post symptoms of COVID? And since CAT1 and CAT2, do you not see any doctor but quarantine at home? Okay, post-COVID, if you are category 1 and category 2, two weeks after you complete your quarantine, you can take your uh, vaccination. Uh, kepada yang quarantine but you were negative, about 1 to 2 days or 2 to 3 days after you completed your, your quarantine, if you still did not develop any symptoms, you can go for your vaccination uh, schedule, no problem. Kepada kategori okay. 3, 4 dan 5, when you, you are discharged from your doctor's care, you usually will be advised when you can take the vaccine. Uh, the rough idea is that category 2 is about 21 days after you recover. Category 4 and 5 is about 28 days after you recover. Okay, alright. Uh, this is from Encik Sharul Nizam pula. Dr. Malas soalan saya. Saya bulan lepas first dose AstraZeneca and next dose akhir September nanti. Boleh ke ambil vaksin Thaipot untuk sijil kendalian makanan sekarang ke atau Kena tunggu complete dos kedua baru boleh ambil Thaipot. Berapa lama tempoh baru boleh saya ambil lepas ambil dos vaksin untuk Thaipot? Mohon pencerahan doktor. Okay, now kita minta seseorang itu menjarakkan vaksin uh, jenis vaksin COVID-19 dan vaksin-vaksin lain supaya bila ada apa-apa kesan sampingan, kita tahu dia datang daripada siapa. That's why we ask them to get two weeks. So ideally sebelum ambil first dose AstraZeneca tu kalau dah ambil typhoid tu easy lah lepas 2 minggu then you start AstraZeneca. The problem with AstraZeneca is the first dose dengan second dose tu 8 minggu, 2 bulan gap kan. So orang yang pengendali makanan ni you want to renew your license you have to take the typhoid jab. So uh, jika sebelum ini anda pernah mengambil vaksin typhoid dan anda tidak pernah mengalami apa-apa kesan sampingan anda yakin anda pasti boleh je go ahead tak ada masalah. Uh, sebenarnya dari segi sains, dari segi biologi kita tak kita tak halam pun ya. Tapi hmm. kalau uh, vaksin typhoid tu pun baru first time nak ambil takut ada apa-apa kesan sampingan nanti allergic dan sebagainya. Uh, then you have no choice. You kena tunggu tiga minggu selepas dos kedua di September nanti. Uh, then you can take lah supaya boleh nampak cara block and block you know. Ini kesan sampingan typhoid, ini kesan sampingan AstraZeneca dan sebagainya. Yeah, so typhoid you know, saya dah cakap typhoid sebab ingatkan typhoid tu wondering juga apa tu. Okay alright. Typhoid. 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 Okay. typhoid yeah. yeah. Right. Okay Puan Suzana Abdullah ada this is a good question. How to take care of warga emas age 70 plus yang positif COVID self-quarantine at home having mild symptoms? Ooh that's difficult. Uh, I mean 70 years old I assume hmm. mesti ada sikit-sikit masalah kesihatan. Uh, I will be a little bit worried kalau tak ada doctor's consultation. Uh, it be the best to take doctor's mm -hmm. consultation tapi uh, dia kata big reading ke? Dia kata no, no, tak ada big reading. So, uh, care, uh, caretaker, uh, tu satu perenggan terakhir yang saya belum cover lagi. Caretaker, kalau kita menjaga orang lain yang COVID positive, what should we do? You should always wear a mask, if possible double mask, if possible wear your face shield. <coughs> always sanitize your hand. If possible, kalau you jaga adult lain, uh, dia duduk di bilik dan sebagainya, distance yourself one meter away and always sanitize everything that you take from them or you send them. Uh, that is if normal adult. Kalau macam elderly, big reader, you have no choice then pergi dekat, care for them, then you must wear your mask, sanitize your hands. Uh, it will be very, very great if you have been vaccinated because your risk of getting the infection and the risk of getting severe form of the disease will be uh, significantly lower. Uh, for 70 years old, I'm not sure what is the guideline by JKM but I think ideally uh, wajarlah bawa ke CAC Centre untuk uh, saringan. 
jika tidak boleh gunakan teleconsultation ini untuk doktor bagi a bit of input uh, ideally bagi ubat dari awal seperti ubat demam dan sebagainya supaya diorang boleh uh, lawan jangkitan itu dengan baik jika ada apa-apa warning sign jangan lewatkan bawa ke hospital dengan segera Okay, I'm going to go straight to questions yang uh, ada kena, kena mengena dengan today's topic ya because we've got quite a few questions so just to be selective Okay, um, Miss Riziana Ahmad is asking what are the things to do during quarantine if cannot reach CAC by call and how to protect child from home quarantine person virus? Uh, I think what are the things to do during quarantine if cannot reach by CAC? I, I, I spoke in the whole session. So Tadi you ya. might want to go from, uh, listen from the whole session again. Hmm. Uh, but again, uh, whether or not one should or must go to a CAC center. Now, the government have said that uh, if you are category one and category two, low risk, you don't have to go to CAC. You, uh, they have started a teleconsultation CAC. Yeah. Um, if you can't get a teleconsultation CAC center, then I really don't know what else you should do. <laughs> Because okay. I think you should get them by CAC. If your symptoms are mild, you are young, you're okay, you don't have more signs, I think you can just continue the home quarantine uh, and you might just want to get the release letter later just to update your mind uh, If yeah. possible, you want to contact private doctors like Kalabi Ashicharas who have teleconsultation just like a private CAC to help right. you during your quarantine center. Um, another thing is how to protect children from home quarantine who are, from the person who have been tested positive. Uh, Now, I always say if you have a good support system, you can send the child to an, if, if your child does it negative anyway, and um, and then uh, the rest of you all are negative also, the risk of the child to become positive is quite low, then you can send to, you know, your sister's house or somewhere there, but then, but then, they have to be prepared that if hmm. your child turns positive, then they have risk, so they must understand how to care for a child who has had a contact before. But it is always safer to send child to another center because it's so susah to judge the children, you know, like I have a son of three years old. I know how difficult it can be. Uh, the best way is uh, not to give them an idea that somebody is there in that room. Uh, jangan bagi dia nampak, jangan bagi dia dengar, jangan bagi dia tahu dan sebagainya. That be the yeah. easier so that dia tak tahu tantrum, dia tak nak pergi. So, because even if they don't like that auntie ataupun that maksu yang dalam bilik itu, The moment yeah. they know there's a maksu there, they just say put one to go and kacau and yeah. tolong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, sanitization, mask, uh, and uh, yeah, it, it, it's back to basics actually. Uh, okay. Avoid, avoid a contact. And of course the positive person point, avoid double mask, mm -hmm. face chill, mm -hmm. one meter away, yeah. even in the same house, those kind of measures are really help. Okay, we're going to take one more question. This is uh, regarding quarantine as well. Puan Wani Rahim is asking, husband dan saya positif. Masih ada enam anak lagi di rumah. Wow. Masalahnya setelah sakit enam hari baru buat COVID test yesterday and positif. Tapi memang dah quarantine di rumah dari hari pertama sakit. Sudah maklumkan kepada KKM sebab buat test di klinik luar. Buat masa sekarang sudah tiada demam tapi masih batuk dan hilang deria rasa dan bau. Soalan saya maknanya ini hari keberapa saya dah kuarantin? Okay. Hari yang dia test positif tu kita masih kira hari pertama. Okay, that's it. I I, I will go there. Sebenarnya different, right. okay. different PKD officers hmm. uh, will hmm. test differently because there's so yes, much sir. more question to ask symptoms to apa, yeah, uh, siapa yeah. start symptom dulu, husband dulu ke, suap, uh, isteri dulu ke, dapat dari mm. mana, jumpa dekat mana, where do you live, where do you work, we need yes. to find the epidemiological link, we need to understand from there, it's not, it's just not the symptoms. Uh, yes. But because there are six other children in the in the house, I would be safe and sorry, so I, I will mm. blanketly say hari test positif tu is first day. So you yes. continue another 10 days from there or 40 days yeah. from there. I would say that. But you need to connect balik. Update my sejahtera, pergi dekat help desk, cakap new positive. Yeah. Ataupun pergi dekat status, update, sebutkan new positive. Okay. And then uh, submit dekat my sejahtera dan uh, doktor daripada my sejahtera tu akan updatekan okay. dan beri nasihat sebenarnya. Okay, uh, Puan Nur Raudatul Hassana uh, sebab soalan uh, soalan Puan doktor lepas kita habis quarantine wajib kena swap. Doktor tadi dah bagi tahu tak lah. So you don't have to do that. I'm on your behalf, I tolong jawabkan. Okay. Uh, 
Hmm, dah, sorry ya, dah, Nabila Natasha, doktor kalau satu family positif COVID tapi positif COVID pada tarikh selang empat uh, dan lima hari perlu kuarantin dalam bilik ataupun tidak. I think this goes back to your answer yang tadi tu ya. If everyone has tested positive, hmm. then most likely you don't have to quarantine lah. Everyone is positive. Okay. You, you become okay. like my sedang. Okay, alright. Ada apa-apa lagi, uh, Doctor? I think we need to wrap up the questions already. So, thank you so much, guys, for asking Dr. Pelbagai soalan. And if you would like to know more about our home isolation guidelines, you can just do, uh, you can just go to Columbia Asia Hospital uh, punya Facebook website. Then, ada um, dia punya isolation guidelines kat situ. Eh? There's a link to go to Facebook. Okay, so anything else that you would like to add, Doctor, before we call it a day? Uh, I just want to say that at this point of time, uh, kita ada mm. nearly 19 to 20,000 new cases per day. I, I haven't seen what's the number mm. of cases today. Yeah, I think and it's 22. Have, okay, and we yeah. have 1.4 million COVID survivors uh, by today with 32 mm. million population or 33 million population. I think 1.4 million is quite significant. I would like to send out message to everyone out there. Please, yeah. please show your love, show your positivity when your friends or your family members tested positive or have to be on quarantine. Do not stigmatize them. Do not uh, treat them differently. Do not uh, kill their emotion. Uh, we, uh, kesihatan is something that is being uh, granted to us. Uh, we yes. are happy that despite all the pandemic, if you still tested negative, the first thing you want to do is bersyukur and mm. show love as much as you can. If you cannot, you are a paranoid person, then just don't say anything. And to everyone out there, if you're on home quarantine, you need to be on home quarantine, you need to care for somebody on home quarantine. Uh, we are sending yeah. all our love from Columbia Asia Hospital to us, from Columbia Asia Group. Uh, we wish you all the best. We wish everything goes smooth for you. And please, please, please abide by the home quarantine rule. Don't mm -hmm. reach them just because you don't have the gelang or nobody is watching you because mm -hmm. we want to fight this and we want to come out of this pandemic together as a society, together yeah. as a nation. And I think this is more meaningful in this Merdeka month. We want to do it yes. together. You can ask help from us, from your friend, but don't breach the home quarantine so that uh, the rest of the society can be safer. That's all from me and Columbia Asia Hospital. Chai. Thank you so very much, Dr. Mala Santi Santara Segapan, Medical Officer from Columbia Asia Hospital Cheras. If you'd like to uh, hear more from her, she will be on her Celoteh Dr. Mala Facebook. You can go check it out because Dr. Dengan Dr. Amir ya, uh, malam ni yeah. will have another talk about COVID so you guys can ask questions there. Ada yang tanya link, Dr. Nanti jangan lupa Dr. Bagi, kita akan postkan. Sure, okay. sure. Awesome. Thank you, boys. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.